high drama unfolded in restive Manipur today over Chief Minister N. Biren Singh's supposed resignation. He was apparently almost on the verge of resigning, but then he suddenly changed his mind under public pressure. Now, take a look at how it all played out. And we'll put the pictures for you. Hundreds of women gathered near the Chief Minister's residence. They formed a human chain saying they do not want him to quit. Apparently, a copy of his resignation, that, that is Mr. Biren Singh's resignation letter, was also torn by his supporters. Barely an hour later, N. Biren Singh shot down all speculation that he was about to resign from his position. In fact, he tweeted and said he will continue at this important juncture because it is not wise for him to quit. Listen in. We also got the news that Biren Singh, the Honorable CM, is going to resign. He is going to resign and we don't want that. We want him as a CM. That's why we are doing this in the morning at 7 p.m. with a water bottle so that we support him. We really want peace. Peace is what we are looking for. But at this rate, at this point of our where we are in the turmoil, if the government, if the Chief Minister of Manipur resigns, means I want to put up the question to him that where he is thinking of leaving the public behind. Where will we go? Who will lead us? He has been from the beginning responsible with this conflict. He is connected with this conflict. As a leader of the state, he must be responsible for this conflict. And conflict resolution also must be responsible through him. Okay, it is day 56 of unrest in the state of Manipur. It was also day two of Rahul Gandhi's visit to Manipur. Uh, today, he followed the government's directions. He reached Moirang by a helicopter from Imphal. He visited relief camps, interacted with affected citizens. And then, after returning to the state capital, which is Imphal, the former Congress MP also met with Manipur's governor, Anusuya Uke. As he stepped out, he urged Manipur to restore peace, saying that violence will not solve anything. Listen in. मणिपुर को शांति की जरूरत है हिंसा से कुछ नहीं होने वाला है लीफ कैंप्स में मैं गया हर कम्युनिटी से मैं लीफ कैंप्स में थोड़ी कमियां हैं दवाई की कमी है खाने की थोड़ी कमी है तो सरकार को इन चीजों के बारे में एक्शन लेना चाहिए मगर मेरी अपील है हर व्यक्ति से मणिपुर के हर व्यक्ति से कि मणिपुर को श As I said, it is day 56 of violence in Manipur. There are sporadic incidents of violence that are still being reported. Uh, tires were burned by miscreants in the Bishnupur area last night. Those were some very dramatic pictures that came to us. Then two people have been killed in Manipur in the last 48 hours after fresh violence erupted in the state. The Indian Army clashed with miscreants in the Kang Pokai district and the death of at least two people, including a policeman in a gunfight has once again put the state on the edge. Meanwhile, even after 57 days, Manipur continues to be without internet. The internet ban today uh, has been extended. It was imposed, ladies and gentlemen, on May 3rd. It has now been extended till July 5th, which means for about two months, Manipur has been without internet, which also means that a lot of what is happening in Manipur is not being reported, it's not reflecting in mainstream media simply because the internet isn't functioning. The Manipur government has said that the ban has been extended to prevent any further disturbances in the state. I'm being joined by Congress MP Manish Tiwari, uh, who is joining us to speak to us about the situation in Manipur and Rahul Gandhi's visit there. Mr. Tiwari, thank you very much. Can I get a reaction? Uh, on how the Manipur administration on day one handled Rahul Gandhi's visit, uh, stopping his convoy, keeping him waiting for hours and then not letting him proceed further? Well, first of all, I am absolutely anguished that the Prime Minister has not spoken a single word on Manipur. Not a single word of support, not a single word to apply the healing touch not a single word to apply the soothing balm of comfort on a state which has been torn asunder 
by ethnic violence. Uh, 12,000 odd people are in relief camps in the neighboring state of Mizoram. Manipur is a border state. It has serious law and order implications. So therefore, under those circumstances, uh, it uh, was left to the leader of the opposition or the former Congress president to go and apply that uh, balm of support and to try and heal the wounds. And there also, rather than facilitate the visit, take advantage of it. After all, he's doing a national service you decided to, or you decide to subvert that visit also. No, but but Mr. Tiwari, the BJP is saying that it is Rahul Gandhi who is taking advantage of the situation in Manipur. They are calling him a political opportunist. They are saying he is no messiah of peace. He simply wants to keep the pot boiling in the state of Manipur. If there, if the situation is still tense, which clearly it is, uh, why why go why go there for a photo op? That's what the BJP is saying. Well, you had two months to go and apply the balm of uh, Sakor. Why didn't you go? What stopped the BJP from going? Except for the Home Minister, who made one visit, which unfortunately also did not calm things down, which BJP leader has gone. So therefore, uh, to talk drivel all the time and try and undermine uh, those who seek to bring about uh, peace and calm in the state of Manipur, uh, bridge the divide and the gap, which unfortunately has come between communities who have been living in peace and harmony, uh, is, is nothing short of doing national disservice. Okay, we we'll leave it there for the moment, Mr. Tiwari. Thank you very much. My guest this evening, Patricia Mukhim, someone who knows Manipur very well. She's the editor of the Shillong Times. Uh, joining us on the broadcast, Ashpreet Khadial is spokesperson of the Congress Party, and Jaydeep Mazumdar is an author. He's a columnist as well. Uh, first things first, since we saw those pictures of the resignation drama that played out today in Imphal, Patricia Mukhim, what do you make of it? Uh, first, there are women who come outside the chief minister's residence and supposedly tear off a resignation letter. And then barely, you know, an hour later, the, the chief minister comes and says, hey, I'm not resigning. What do you make of all of this? No, I think you didn't follow up the news because yesterday uh, the, the women mm. from the hills had mm. come down. I think about 15,000 of them had mm. come down and, uh, you know, circled the CM's bungalow and asked him to stop down, uh, step down. And then this was orchestrated today. We also have to understand that there's such a sharp divide the women who came yesterday were from the hills, Kukizo women. Today, the people who supported Biran Singh and told him not to resign were Meite women. And Meite women are quite used to coming together and, as a group and uh, obstructing even uh, the security forces from doing their, their duties. So this was very well orchestrated. And we can all see that it's drama. But there are a few questions that need to be asked at this point, And that is... On June 4th, an inquiry committee was set up, headed by a retired judge of the Guwahati High Court. Today, it is the 30th of June. Do we even have some preliminary uh, sort of uh, understanding of the reasons behind the violence? Because if you need to bring peace, you also need to know the reasons that created the violence in the first place. How many more deaths do we need before law and order is restored? We, we keep saying more than 100 deaths, more than 100 deaths. What is the body count? Why aren't we able to get the exact figures? It means that some bodies are still out there, not counted. And then what will it take for law and order to be restored in Manipur? How can law and order ever be restored when the chief minister is seen to be siding with his people? And I had said earlier that there is a sharp divide. It's an ethnic divide. If you do not have an impartial person, how can law and order be restored? How can, mm. how can you even think about peace? And a peace committee was formed. It became a non-starter. So where do you begin again? And mm. again, I'm asking this question, why is a prime minister silent? What will it take for him to tell Biran Singh to quell the violence or quit? Shouldn't he have been given giving the mm. chief minister of a state those sort of uh, orders? Why did the prime minister have to be briefed by the home minister on the situation in Manipur? It's it's really really pathetic. Mm. 
And if we recall, in March this year, uh, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act was withdrawn from a total of 19 police stations which means that even if the army were to come and help in restoring law and order, their hands are tied basically because uh, they can't function without the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. So I, I don't know really what is the game plan of the central government. It really is a very murky okay. uh, civil war out here. And uh, I mean, nobody really seems to be bothered. Today, the Prime Minister was riding the metro and visiting Delhi University and doing all kinds of things except saying a single word on Manipur. This is really un unforgivable. Mm. In a in a situation which is as complex as it is in Manipur, Ashpit Khadiyal, uh, what was Rahul Gandhi hoping to achieve? Look, I'll give him, I'll, I'll give him a points for one thing. Uh, 56 days into the conflict, into the civil war, as uh, Patricia Mukhim is saying, you make an appearance. Uh, many people can say too late, too little, too late, but then the prime minister hasn't showed up either, so, you know, uh, at least he's scored on that count. But beyond that, what has been achieved? Nothing. He's come, he's seen, he's met some people. To, you know, to his credit, he's not made any political statements, but... I mean, what has the visit achieved? Thank you for the question. First and foremost, what has Mr. Gandhi's visit achieved is not to be answered by me, but has been answered by the people of Manipur. Nobody was, no Bharti Janta Party's leader was willing to listen to them, was willing to, uh, you know, show their uh, condolences and sympathies for them. It was Mr. Gandhi that went there. And the kind of restraint that was shown to stop Mr. Gandhi should have been shown to stop the violence. As far as uh, the delay is concerned that you talked of, I think Mr. Gandhi was uh, in the United States of America and he could not have been present at two places at one point of time. However, Mr. Modi has been in India for a very long time. He can talk of the requirement of dialogue and delivery, uh, dialogue and discussion in Ukraine, uh, Russia, but cannot talk of dialogue and discussion in Manipur. He can uh, talk of uh, Ukraine, he can talk to the president of Russia, but won't talk to the governor, won't uh, come and try and meet with the people because that would have meant a lot to the people. As far as, you know, uh, what you asked Mr. Tiwari, I have one answer to that, uh, Shreya. Uh, you said that he went for a photo up is what the Bharti Janta Party is saying. Well, the uh, Bharti Janta Party's leaders have they never went and met with the victims uh, of violence. Was that for photo op? Were they opportunists? Mr. Modi himself has met so many victims back in the day. Does that make him an opportunist? So the Bharti Janta Party should give up their double standards in the first place. Number two, ever since this government of Bharti okay. Janta Party has been formed, mm -hmm. there, there has been riots and violence all over the country. I'll give an example. 2023 Manipur violence, 2022 Ranchi violence, 2022 Kanpur violence, 2022 Shiva Muga riots, 2021 Asian uh, Assam eviction violence, 2020 Bangalore riots, 2020 Delhi riots, and I can keep going on and on. And there have been so many incidents ever since this government took over India okay. that, you know, we have lost count more than uh, the number okay. of years. So last point, last no, point, please. The situation in Manipur has been completely mismanaged. No, the situation yes, in Manipur yes. has been completely mismanaged. I think that is for everyone, every citizen in this country to see if a state continues to burn for 57 days, not five days or seven days, but 57 days, then the administration in Manipur and the political leadership in Manipur has completely failed. But let us not try and say that, uh, you know, the central government or the prime minister or, or, or the home minister would not have tried to quell the situation there. Uh, these are terrible optics for them. After all, this is a state that is governed by the BJP. So then these are terrible optics for the BJP, but Mr. Majumdar, please come in here. Ek minute, ek minute. Uh, Mr. Majumdar, come in here and help me understand what is the, just a minute, what is Mr. Majumdar, this deep reluctance for the BJP not to sack Mr. Biren Singh? This is, you know, this is a chief minister who has failed to control violence in the state for 57 straight days. You give a period, you give a person, a chief minister, a grace period of seven days, eight days, ten days, one month, one month. It's now been two months. 
Yeah, precisely. Uh, uh, I, I completely agree with you that the situation has been completely mismanaged. Uh, you know, things should have been brought to order a long, long time ago. Uh, deaths are very unfortunate. Uh, and this whole thing that was staged uh, today was a drama, nothing less. Okay. Having said that, I will say that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Biren Singh now has the upper hand. Uh, you know, he's he was told to resign. He was asked to resign and see what he has done. He has uh, staged, managed a demonstration in his favor. And now he's become, uh, you know, believe it or not, uh, uh, this is a stark reality. He's become a hero to Maitis. It will be very difficult to remove him, to sack him, or to impose president's rule in the state without further infuriating the Maitis now, number one. Number two, uh, uh, you know, there is a lot which has been said about, like, the prime minister's silence. I don't uh, wish to speak on the prime minister's behalf or why he is silent and all. But uh, yes, I agree that an, a, a, a few statements could have easily been issued. Coming to what the Congress spokesperson, I'll make two points. One, this, one was the Congress spokesperson citing out instances of uh, violence which has happened or, or unrest which has happened in the country over the past, say, nine and a half years. Uh, if you talk about only Manipur, as far as uh, uh, violence and the, the riots in Congress regimes are concerned, I won't go into that. I mean, it's all well known that there have been many, many more communal riots during the Congress rule rather than uh, over the last nine and a half years. If we look at only Manipur, Narasimha Rao was a, a prime minister. Kuki Naga clashes, 1993, 230 killed, one lakh display, uh, displaced. Narasimha Rao did not visit Manipur. Uh, Shankar Rao Chavan, who was the home minister, did not visit Manipur. And Narasimha Rao, by the way, also kept silent there. Maite Pangal clashes, May 1993, 140 killed. Narasimha Rao was the prime minister. Shankar Rao Chavan was the home minister. Not a single statement issued this happened. Kuki Paite clashes, 1997-1998. H.J. Devagoda and I.K. Gujral were the prime ministers. Home minister was Indrajit Gupta of the CPIM. No prime minister had ever visited None of these two mm. prime ministers, supported by the Congress, had visited uh, Manipur that time or issued their statements. So let us not go into in a finger pointing and all that. Uh, but coming to the main thing, you know, what is what what uh, what uh, the issue at large in, uh, before Manipur today is how to defuse the situation. There is one uh, immediate solution, well, immediate requirement for that, and that is to disarm all the groups. I'm talking about Maite groups who have uh, looted arms from the police armory. It's a different thing that uh, such a thing should not have happened at all. No punishment has been meted out to the cops who have been found failing in their duty. They should have been the first thing to be done. Cops' heads should have rolled out there. Number two, except for issuing appeals to return arms, appeals, meek appeals by, uh, by the chief minister to return arms, the, they sh he should have allowed the army, the security forces to go all out against uh, uh, the looters because the identity of the looters are known. There should be an immediate disarming and immediate restraint put on, uh, uh, you know, these uh, um, uh, Meite Lipun and Aram, uh, the other group, uh, I'm forgetting, Aram Bai Tengal. These two groups should be disarmed. The Meite mm. terror outfits, uh, the, the valley-based terror outfits, they are again becoming active. And the situation will get much worse if they become very, very active and they regain the trust of the people. They should be, the Absolutely. army should be given a free hand to, to uh, uh, you know, control uh, uh, the law and order situation. And I think Article 355 should be imposed so that the law and order machinery is taken over by the center. Biren Singh uh, is rendered powerless in that regard. You cannot have a weak need approach to the situation that has been developing in Manipur in the last 56 days. And that is exactly how it has played out in these last two months. So if that's going to be your approach, things will get out of hand because there are insurgents roaming with guns. Uh, you know, it just takes a bullet, as they say, uh, to orchestrate or create a riot. I hope it doesn't happen, but the fact is that over the last two months, there has been enough violence to kill more than 100 people. Patricia is right. We still don't know what more than 100 means. The Indian Express had put the figure to 115 two weeks ago. Patricia, I don't know how, uh, you know, how much that has increased, but the number is scary. This is a state in India which is where, where the situation right now is completely out of control. Mr. Majumdar, do you have a number? 125 today with the three deaths yesterday. 100 in. Okay, we'll class. go with that. 100 in. Yeah. Okay, uh, with three. Yeah, there, 
there, there were, there were, uh, no, uh, Ashpreet, out of time. I'm sorry we had lost your frame in the middle. Completely out of time. But Patricia, thank you very much. Ashpreet, good to have you on the show. And Jaydeep Mazundar, 125 people dead, according to you, in the last 50 days in Manipur. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a state in India that is burning. And the state government there has completely failed in its responsibility to restore peace there. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us.